In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We gather to celebrate the 32nd Sunday in ordinary time. Stay awake. That is God's invitation to us. Stay awake. And this invitation is very timely, especially at this time as we approach the end of the liturgical year. Let us ask God for forgiveness for the many times we've not been awake. We've either been asleep or we've been drowsy or outright insensitive to the signs of the times. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep from us all adversity, so that unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, and our brother, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Resplendent and unfading is wisdom, and she is readily perceived by those who love her, and found by those who seek her. She hastens to make herself known in anticipation of their desire. Whoever watches for her at dawn shall not be disappointed, for he shall find her sitting by his gate. For taking thought of wisdom is the perfection of prudence, and whoever for her sake keeps vigil shall quickly be free from care. 
because she makes her own rounds, seeking those worthy of her, and graciously appears to them in the ways and meets them with all solicitude. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, about those who have fallen asleep, so that you may not grieve like the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose, so too will God, through Jesus, bring with him those who have fallen asleep. Indeed, we tell you this on the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will surely not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself, with a word of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, will come down from heaven, 
and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we, who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Thus shall we always be with the Lord. Therefore, console one another with these words. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones, when taking their lamps, brought no oil with them, but the wise brought flasks of oil with their lamps. Since the bridegroom was long delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, there was a cry, Behold the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise ones replied, No, there, are, there may not be enough for us and you. Go instead to the merchants and buy some for yourselves. While they went off to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went into the wedding feast with him. Then the door was locked. Afterwards, the other virgins came and said, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he said in reply, Amen, I say to you, I do not know you. Therefore, stay awake, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise stay awake. Stay awake. We are coming to the end of the liturgical year and the readings are talking about the end of time. And Jesus tells this parable not just about the end of the world but also about the end of our own lives. But more than that, Jesus talks about the, our living in the now. Stay awake. What does staying awake mean? What does staying awake mean in the context 
that Jesus presents us with today. To stay awake does not simply mean not to be asleep. It means to be alert. It means we have to be sensitive. We have to be in the present moment. Stay awake. It also means that we have to be sensitive to the move of God. What is God doing now in our midst? It means that we have to be sensitive to the signs of the times. Understand when things are changing and when God is calling us to change, not just as individuals, but as a church and as a people. Stay awake. And Jesus uses the, talks about the ten virgins. Well, if this, this word virgin is used within the context of Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14, we are talking about maidens, unmarried women. They went to meet the bridegroom, they went for a wedding feast, and even though they were virgins, some of them were foolish. It means that what you are is not simply what makes you wise. You can be a priest and be foolish, can be a bishop and be foolish. You can be anything and still be foolish. 90 years old and foolish. So, when we say that, you know, age comes, wisdom comes with age, well, the analysis, you know, we can do the analysis later, but there are still people who are aging, but they have learned nothing. And so, there are people who are virgins and they are foolish, Jesus tells us. But more than that, the morale of the story is what is important to us. Sensitivity. Sensitivity. In the Bible, we are told that Jesus, of course, recorded, wept twice. First, he wept at the tomb of Lazarus because of their friendship. But secondly, he wept over Jerusalem. He came and beheld Jerusalem. And he wept. His heart broke. He said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. If only you are sensitive to what God is doing in your midst. If only you are sensitive to the opportunities that God is offering. He said, but you have failed to recognize the time of your visitation. And in some ways today, maybe Jesus also weeps for his church. We seem to be a church with an identity crisis. Stay awake. What an invitation at this time. Stay awake. Just last week I was with Father Elliot Needs, who is my community member. We had coffee in the morning, sat for about an hour, talked about the movie he watched the night before, which was Sunday night, And he went into our little chapel and had mass at 11 o'clock and went for his doctor's appointment. But he never came back. The man I walked to the car and he drove off, 
in less than two hours was pronounced dead. Stay awake. And Jesus asked, because you do not know the hour or the time. I don't think Jesus is, is telling us to become perfect in the sense of the word that will become perfect in heaven. But Jesus is calling us to sincerity of purpose. Wisdom. Staying awake is wisdom. I've driven from Milwaukee to Maryland at least 10 times. And sometimes you get so drowsy that coffee loses its power and you need a place of rest. And things can happen when we get drowsy like the foolish virgins. As individuals and as a church, we can lose our focus. And we can miss the opportunities that God, in his infinite mercy, is presenting us with to become better individuals, a better church, a more loving, a more welcoming, a more compassionate church. It says wisdom stands at the gateways and calls to people who are desirous, come, and that wisdom is staying awake. It is being sensitive. Let us pray at this time. At this time of different transitions. At this time of fear and anxiety. Let us stay on the side of wisdom, which is being awake. Being light in darkness, being sensitive to the signs of the times. And keeping aside, sometimes the religiosity that blinds us from the truth. Stay awake. Let us profess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us lift up our hands in prayer and bring our knees to God, who is our help and our strength. That the church will remain faithful and be prepared for when the bridegroom comes, we pray to the Lord. Lord, we are prayer. That leaders of nations will be alert to opportunities for the promotion of peace we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That people who are coming to the end of their lives will see Christ face to face, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That grateful for and inspired by those veterans who have given their lives for our country, we may bravely face the challenges ahead, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear that those working in nursing homes may continue to lovingly care for those entrusted to them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our That the sick will be filled with Christ's peace, especially Bernie Galloway, Francis Chang, and Helen Stokely, 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died in Christ will be with the Lord forever, especially Monsignor Frank Kazista, Bob Davis, Ida Marzak, and Nina Kuro Flary. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our special needs and intentions, and for all the faithful departed of our parish, Jane France Christ, George Bork, and Carolyn Hildreth, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, your wisdom comes to all who desire her. Hear our prayer and help us to heed your word that wants us to stay awake and be prepared for Christ's coming. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May, may the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of your sake, for our good and good all of the whole church. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honor it with loving devotion through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right, yes. right and just to our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself, was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. By rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we are glad.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like they do for, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Wilton, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Jesus who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament and that you are truly present in this holy mass. I have lovingly worshipped you by prayerfully watching today's mass. So by my membership in the mystical body, please present me to the Father in your perfect sacrifice, O Jesus. Although I do, not, I do desire to receive you as Eucharist in person, at this moment I cannot. I humbly ask you to come to me spiritually. I give myself to you. I love you, O Lord God. Hear my petitions and those of the Church, your bride that we may be drawn by your Spirit towards our beautiful wedding day in your glory. Amen.
Nourished by this sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy. By the pouring forth of your Spirit, the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. This Mass is ended. Go in peace.
Thank you.